Hi, I'd like you to welcome to the Olamana Garden presentation of a controlled environment agriculture. And we're featuring Brandon's screen greenhouse. This construction guide is uh, the sum of the tips and tricks developed over the years that have been learned and taught at Olamana Gardens. Many of the pictures in this guided manual are of the greenhouse, greenhouse built by uh, Brandon in Aea, Hawaii. Basically, we use a 1 and 3 8 galvanized chain link pipe, referred to as a top rail, as normally the top of the fence and supports the chain link below it. Very strong and made not to bend. Very important. Contrast that with many people are building tent structures out of EMT, electric metallic tubing, which is made to bend with one hand by electricians. So you might want to think about that. Stay away from the half inch, three quarter, one inch EMT and go with the one and three eighths inch galvanized chain link pipe. For heavy duty insulation, we move up to the one and five eighths inch pipe used by the chain link fence industry. And that's normally the post where the gates are. A greenhouse structure advantages on it. One, you're modular, you got compact shipping. In fact, many times we don't ship the pipe, we buy it locally. We just ship the fittings, particularly the ones we've had custom made. We fit everything to build this structure in one suitcase and carry it in normal luggage. It's relocatable when you get where you're going. If you need to pick it, take it down and move it over to the other side of the property or relocate it, not a problem. You can center vent it down the ridge. We can do it with a gutter on the inside or you can see in this presentation with a split roof on top. Um, you can screen it in, you know, every, for, find a bug screen as you want or just chicken wire if all you're doing is keeping out animals. Wind protection can be added as needed. By having eaves, the interior of the structure stays much drier. So let's say if a tent was 20 by 20, the outside eaves would be 24 by 24. You know, also, the eaves will shade the interior as you desire. Rainwater is dropped two feet over the sides, helping to keep the interior dry. It's a very affordable greenhouse for Hawaii and tropical areas. Many folks have built these for around the thousand dollars, and that's everything included uh, for it. Uh, the tarp, all the pipes, and the anchors to anchor it to the ground. Now, when you come to the screening, that's your choice, whether you want to do a green uh, uh, cloth, a shade cloth, or whether you want to go with windscreen, if you want to build wood frames or that. Uh, we use materials from Easy Corner Tents Aea in Hawaii uh, on the island of Oahu. They're a great company. I've done business with them for about 24 years. You can see the resources page in the back of this book. Easy Corner folks uh, give great advice and help in assembling the parts needed and very fair pricing. We recommend staying with the trade size tarps and coverings, 10 by 12, 10 by 20, 20 by 20, 20 by 24, very popular sizes. We recommend the clear plastic with a fabric reinforcement or white plastic for a greenhouse uh, for plant growing and silver tarps for over fish tanks that you, and things that you want to have an ultimate shade, you want no sun on. Uh, we use water bottles and water filled pipes to provide stretch and lace in for all tarps. Always anchor all structures to the ground. And their building department has requirements on this and just common sense. You don't want to lose this on a high wind. This book is prepared by Glenn Martinez and Natalie Cash of Olamonic Gardens. It's available in print and online for instant downloading. Overall design notes. We use the common one and three eighths galvanized chain link top rail fencing pipe. We use conventional swap meat tent welded components, curved or straight. We modify the leg on the roof peak fittings to accommodate an eave extension, custom welded for an extension. It runs between eight to $10 a fitting to have that custom little uh, snout put on it at that same angle as the peak. We use wood on all wall legs to accommodate staple uh, and staple screens to the walls. If you don't use the wood, it's really hard to come up with a means of attaching the screens or the fabric to a piece of pipe. It's just too slippery, just too hard to deal with. So we use one by three for strapping, one by four uh, for screws, and ultimate is two by four studs for maximum strength. 
we recommend pre-staining all wood that comes on the project 360 degrees before assembly. We also install a screen door via a framed opening with 2x4s. We simply strap to the pipes at the top and we put concrete stakes at the bottom and you bingo, you can hang a regular conventional screen door. We use two clear tarps on a roof to allow venting. Many times we will take, say you have a 20 by 20 uh, building, you would put on two 10, uh, uh, 12 by 24 tarps. Overall, it'd be 24 by 24. But you see, by doing a 12 by 24 and a 12 by 24, you have a one foot slit right down the center of the ridge, which will allow the hot air to get out. We also recommend using the ground cloth to prevent slugs and soil migration coming in. Um, you, you know, you can also, you'll need wood or gravel for the walking on. Um, and we'll go over and discuss some of the different ways to come up with a level floor. We like to do the two foot eave all the way around our buildings via custom fittings. It takes um, eight additional nine foot, 10 inch pieces of pipe to have an exterior well. But let's say at $10 a pipe, that's only a 90 to $100 more to be added to the eaves as far as the pipe goes. And then the additional fittings on there, they're about eight to $10 a piece. You have maybe another $100 there. So for $200, you will then have a dry interior. It really is worth doing. Uh, the, notice that the two foot side eaves in the front and the back of the building give good rain protection. Now, one of my tricks is to use chain link pipe. Say you go to Home Depot or Lowe's or any chain uh, link company. It's tapered at the end. If I do that, I don't have to buy a $10 connector to connect two pieces of pipe because one will slip inside the other. You know, you can commonly get that pipe in 10 or 21 foot links, and that's great. And so we would buy that and it simplifies some of the fittings. Now, if you use that chain link pipe, you can also save some money by using sleeves that just slip together. And then we use those little self tapping screws you see on the right there. Each self tapping screw has a drill bit at the end. You take your battery powered screw gun, you drill right through the coupling, right into the pipe, and the pipe cannot slip out. Now this is great for permanent installations. The advantage of the easy corner coupling is that they're wing nuts and you can undo them and take the building apart a little faster without tools. Now, one of the options on this sleeve, I show a different picture here, so you see you'll use one screw on each side, okay? And that. So it's a choice whether the building's going to go up and stay up for a while. Do you do that? By the way, an upgrade would be to use stainless steel screws so they don't rust out on you. That'll really facilitate taking it apart if you ever need to. Now to cut the pipe, you know, the all if you had to make just by one tool, you'd buy a battery powered sawzall. That would be my recommendation. Or you can use a corded one, or you can go to a rental company and rent a corded one. It'll get the job done. Safety factor, I much prefer the, the battery, and I don't like to have to run 100-foot extension cards out in the yard or have to work or have to bring a generator just to your own power tools. Here are some of my favorite tools. You do not need to buy all of these, okay? I happen to own these because I find them so useful. First off is the screw gun. Now a screw gun, not only does it, will it screw, it also drill holes and it also will hammer into concrete. A great all round tool. It comes in 12 volt or a heavier duty 18 volt. Then the other favorite little tool is a little one handed sawzall. It's just like the one to slide before, but on this one, you can do it with one hand very quick. Below that, you step up a grade, you go to the little mini band saw. That will do up to the one in phase uh, chain link fence pipe, but nothing larger. If you need to do larger, let's say you're going to do some three inch PVC and other work, then you'd want to buy the larger three inch version and it runs on an 18 volt battery. Uh, but it, it doesn't lend itself to single handed use. OK, and so the little one, that's a new addition to our repertoire of tools and we're enjoying. It. Now, if you got to cut PVC. Now we do a lot of PVC on the outside eave of the pipes. We slide the PVC one and a quarter inch over the top of the galvanized pipe. 
Also, in all the plumbing, I do a lot of aquaponic systems, so I cut a lot of PVC. I like this little, I call it hydraulic cutter. It's really a shear cutter. And they're only about $200 with the battery, everything. If that's a little pricey and this is a one-off deal, you're never going to do it again, oh, you could save a lot of money and just buy a hand tool. I would buy the good Milwaukee one. It, it is easy on the hands and the arm. You can buy $21 ones at the hardware store, but they're rough. Ah, this is my ha my little hope chest. I hope to fill it up completely full. I love digging down, grabbing my tools and getting them out. And I, you notice there's double locks on that. A, these things will grow legs like you wouldn't believe. So we lock them up every night. Also, we happen at Olamata Gardens, we have a bit of a workshop. This is just a small portion of it, but we use, we have normally three of everything. Three chop saws, small, medium, and large. Three band saws, small, medium, and large. Three drill presses, small, medium, and large. So you use the appropriate tool for the job at hand. Now here's the parts list for building a 20 by 20 structure eaves. Now, even if you made the tent smaller say like Brandon he did to fit his yard a 16 by 20 it would be the same number of fittings just some of the 10 foot pipes would be cut down to 8 foot pipe to make two 8 footers would make it 16 foot wide but I won't read this all out to you but you can uh, look it over and you'll see there you have all the parts list that you need to buy and then I will give you a drawing of each one of them and notice the bottom in the center is a lake of it. You see the angle roof? That sets the pitch of the roof. Also notice over there on the bottom right, you have a little pipe frame picture. And that is to show you that's where the top rail is normally installed. That's so a 200-pound guy can go over a fence and it doesn't bend. They're fantastically strong and they take all the tension holding up a chain link. So they really lend yourself. I've been building out of this material for over 24 years and really like it. Now, some of the different ends, once you get the look of it, these are the ones that go out on the end of the, the top ridge. So you see the ridge piece here and then the angle side, that's at the top left and right end of the building. Okay. These are the L's. They will go around the outside corners on the eaves. The T's, that's when you put on the 24-inch extension you're going to see. Well, you have to have a T at the bottom and that'll hold the eave pipe all the way around. So notice on the top left in this picture, that's the fitting that you normally buy at Easy Corner Tent. Now you can get them curved like that or you can get them squared off. Um, either one, both serve the same purpose. Now notice in the lower right, I came up with this. I think I invented it. Uh, I never saw it before I did it. I've never seen it anywhere else. But what we did is we had them weld on a piece of female pipe on there at the same angle as the peak angle so I could screw, slip, slip in my 24-inch eave. By the way, I've done eaves out to 36 inches with braces on them. Now, these are the connectors. If you have to connect two pipes together and you want to be able to take them apart, let's say you go to the beach, like a lot of people buy these tents to go to the beach and set up for a party or a wedding or something like that, this would be appropriate because you can take it apart without any tools. But I, if I'm doing a permanent building, I'll use the chain link sleeves. Now, these are the corners. Now, notice the top drawing, that is a left-handed one. In other words, it's going to go, and if you were looking in the front of the building, it'd be the left-hand front corner. You would buy the opposite of that, a right-hand one, if you're looking at the front of the building, to go the right front corner. So there'd be two lefts and two rights to do the four corners. Now, the bottom picture, that's the fitting of the middle legs. In other words, there's three middle legs on each side. So you see the one leg in the goes down for the leg, and the other one on the left where the arrow is is where the... Uh, Eve is going to go. Now, I like to use the wood. I strap it with a two-hole conduit strap. I buy the one-inch strap for rigid conduit, and it fits right over the top of this one and three-eighths inch galvanized pipe. Sheer coincidence, but it works for me. I always use the two-hole. I've never had one come off. Now, this is a piece of one by four there. If you got, if you can afford it, I would use a two by four. But this will work, and it gives it more than adequate to staple the screen to it. 
Now this is a custom one. Brandon didn't do this on his. He might modify layer. This is an inside gutter. That's two tarps, one from the left, one from the right, and there's a slit at the top of it about six to eight inches wide, up to a foot wide, and underneath it is a gutter, and we just suspend it by what I call the two railroad tracks. That's those two parallel pipes, and I just run boat rope back and forth to support it. Now, when you go to anchor this down, if you're not real permanent, just pound in some stakes and latch onto it. You can use the straps like you see there, or on Brandon's, we tied wire around the stake at the bottom, and we went all the way up to the top around the top pipe, and that way the building cannot lift up off the ground. Now, if you're more permanent, you're going to get a building permit, you're going to need to put in a concrete footing. I like the one on the bottom left there, and you see there, with an elephant toe at the bottom, concrete coming up out of the ground. Now this picture shows a wood post. If you're going to do a metal post coming up, which is on this structure here, you can go wood post or metal post, but most people will just simply put up a, a metal post. You would use a pipe flange there and uh, with the concrete anchors in it. So this is a pipe flange I'm talking about. Those will be going down. This one here is about 15 years old, uh, recycled. Now, I want you to notice the building department, when I got it installed, they had me take each one of those eye bolt nuts out, drill out the hole with a drill bit just a little bit smaller than the nut I'm drilling through so I don't damage the threads. Then they have me put the bolt back in and bury the threads all the way to the bottom. And that way the inspector knows that I drilled into that interior pipe and it's locked together. It's not a friction foot. Uh, friction fit anymore folks now that is a honest to goodness through bolted now here are some that i did over 15 years ago i did a round hole 12 inch around 12 inches deep elephant toed and i put three bolts in it, anchor bolts going to that flange now looking at it i wish i'd brought that concrete two inches out of the ground it wouldn't be getting corroded on me do you see the difference there now that's what they look like when they're brand new. Now another thing you can do is this concrete here on the side. Uh, they sell them pre-made or you make your own. You take your eight by eight inch. And what some people do, they'll put rebarb. They'll drill a hole and put rebarb in it and then bury that so it can't lift out of the ground. Other people, if it's a temporary structure only for the season, they might just use the sheer weight of the concrete and let it go at that. This is a popular way if you're using wood posts, dig the hole down at least a foot to foot and a half deep post hole. You pour the concrete in and what I do is I take a five gallon bucket and I cut it in half on a chainsaw and I use it as a collar, kind of as a form, you know, like a sono tube, you know, just a short one. And that's why I get the concrete up above the surface and it's at a slope so the water runs off to the bottom side. I have not experienced any rot, no termites getting in. It's been working pretty good. This is one I'd done early before I discovered that technique. This is where we put wood straight into the ground. And you guessed it, we've had to replace a couple of them. When we replace them, we put them in concrete now. Now, if you have a flooring, let's say you have a 16 by 20 tent or 20 by 20 tent, and you've got beds in there, nursery beds, you want to be able to roll a card in there. So we like to have a raised wood flooring, okay? Also, if you're where it's rain and water is going to flow through your nursery, it's nice to have a rain floor so you're not walking in the mud, okay? So we've used wood pallets or two by fours laid on the ground. And uh, we put down like four inches of gravel, then lay two by four lumber 16 inches apart. And then we screw down the plywood ducking on the level. Uh, half inch is the thinnest I've ever used. Three quarter is first class. That's a great way to go. Uh, but a lot of nurseries, most of your commercial nurseries only have compacted gravel floor. They let it go at that. But keep in mind, they most likely put a plastic weed cloth or sheeting underneath the gravel to prevent water or weeds coming up. Now, I like the weed cloth because it'll let water from the surface go down. If you spill water, the rain gets in, but won't let the weeds come up. Great stuff. So there's some pictures of some wood floors we built here at Ola Mata Gardens. The, that top one there is the uh, two by fours on a gravel and then screwed down the half inch plywood. 
Uh, real popular, we did a 1,200-foot greenhouse with brick flooring. We put a 2x4 uh, form all the way around, put sand all, gravel and sand on the inside, leveled it, and simply laid paper bricks. I can pull them up and change them. I can re relocate that building if I want to. Now, notice in the lower right-hand picture that I have a piece of wood. What is that? Well, there's a sump tank, a fish sump tank underneath that. So the water goes into it, but I want to be able to get that once a year or so and clean out the silt. So I just lift off a piece of three-quarter inch plywood and I get to it. But I can roll right over it with a wheelbarrow or a cart. But here's the old-time favorite, a simple gravel compacted gravel. You put it down and we buy what they call uh, Select County Borough, B-U-R-R-O-W, I think it's spelled. And what that is, it's three quarter inch, half inch and sand mixed together and compacts down. That's what the city and county uses underneath an asphalt or concrete road as a foundation. Now, if you're going to use wood, I highly encourage you to preserve that wood in the structure. Use stain instead of paint. Stain soaks into the wood. Paint sits on the surface of the wood. And when you have to repaint, you got to sand and scrape and prep it. Forget that. Use stain and every year or two, just slap another coat and keep it sealed in. Now keep in mind, in all of America, Canada, and I believe also Mexico, all the wood is borax treated. That is a water soluble chemical, harmless to us, okay? You just don't drink it in water. It would, that would mess you up. But short of drinking it, pretty harmless stuff. We use it in our laundry all over America, 20 mule team borax. It fights mildew and stain. And what they do is they put it in the wood and it keeps the termites from eating it. It will kill the termite if they eat it, okay? So, but it's water soluble, so you need to seal it into the wood so that rain gets on it, it won't wash it out. Now, if it's in an attic or it's on framing and it's never going to get wet, don't need to do it. But I assume the worst. So we stain our wood 360 before we assemble it. If we cut it in the, in the, while we're construction, we simply stain, seal and stain the end of it with borax. Now, I like to use, a, I always make sure whatever I use is organic approved. Most of your high quality latex water base are cleared to use for organic. Now, notice they'll say after it dries. In other words, can't put a plant in a bucket of stain. No, that won't go. But you can paint the wood with it. And once it's dried and cured, then it's safe on an organic farm. Now, my most popular size is 20 by 20 with two foot eaves, okay? And that will give me an enclosed building of 20 by 20. The roof is 24 by 24, okay? And uh, with uh, no, if I want a vent, I'll use two 12 by 24 tarps to get a, a vent on it. I use corrugated plastic roofing panels. You could use metal, but they'd be heavier and just unnecessary. I use 24 inches wide and I'll buy an 8, 10 or 12 foot links. Now, if I have a big opening on that bin, I will take two of these and pop rivet them together and I can make myself a gutter that is 36 inches wide. Works fantastic, okay, of whatever length I want. And this stuff is very reasonably priced. Here's some of the plastic sheeting we use, okay. Now, I like the... Uh, like the Landmaster Pro Top or any of the ones similar to that, heavy duty weed barrier. Or you can do the plastic sheeting. But keep in mind, if you use plastic sheeting and then you put gravel on top of it or bricks or something, if water goes down, it will sit on top of the plastic for a long, long time. I don't need that. I don't, I'm not in favor of doing that. Now, I mentioned before, I use one inch rigid pipe strap. Now that's for one inch galvanized electrical pipe happens to be one and three eighths inch on the outside, the same as the chain link. Now most important is, do you notice that little uh, half inch self tapping screw? I like to use stainless steel ones so they never rust. And I screw it right through the clamp into the pipe and that way that pipe cannot slip on the strap. Okay. Now, other ways you can do it is a plastic plumber strap or a metal plumber strap. Again, make sure you use a self-tapping screw through one of those holes to secure it together. Now, this is something we discovered, and that is the uh, good old American square bolt, okay? I call them muffler bolts, all right? 
And what they do is it allows me to put pipes, see in the top picture, 90 degrees to each other. Notice the clamp sits at a 45 degree angle. Fantastic stuff. So those two pictures on the top show how you do it. Now the Ubel, the traditional one, that's for clamping two pipes together that are going in the same direction. Now, if I'm installing one by four wood strips, that's to give me a stapling surface for the screen, okay? Again, use two by four if you can afford it. It's a classy act. And I like to use two by six or two by eights down on the bottom. You see on the right-hand picture, the green down there, you know, I've even used up to two by 12. It depends on if I have to avoid water coming in because maybe I'm on a hill on a slope and I got a water coming down the mountain. Again, stain everything 360 before you install it. It's hard to stain it once it's installed. Now, sometimes decorative for privacy or to shield me from wind, I'll build a, a wall with a lattice and sometimes I will hinge it so I can open it up in the summertime and close it up in the wintertime. Uh, the rolled bamboo fencing has worked out very good for us. Okay, doesn't last as long as the lattice does. But that, by the way, on the lattice, I was in the Philippines and they put two sheets up and one sheet could, was fixed stable. The other one could slip and you literally could slide it left or right and close up those openings and make it a solid wall. Uh, very popular is windscreens. And that's what Brandon did. He was on the front cover of this book. He used the window screen and you can buy that 30, 60, 70 percent. You can buy it almost anything you can think of, what percentage of sun you want to cut out. Now, one thing is if you build these buildings, you're in a high wind area, highly recommend buying the bracing, okay? Very inexpensive, short piece of pipe. I use three footers to five footers. On this one, I use three footers. On Brandon, because he was taller, we use five footers. Just go with what's appropriate. They two little clamps on either side. And again, don't forget to use the self-tapping screws. That keeps anything from slipping. Now, here's another shot. This is Brandon. Those are five footers installed there. Okay, right? Now, notice that cable up there uh, that's going to, uh, horizontal. You're gonna see that that cable was run to avoid having a center pipe in the middle of his nursery. More on that later. Now this is an in view and you can see there, notice right in the center, the pipe in the center is short. It's only about three feet long. That's because it's going through that cable I showed you in the previous slide. And that is when you tighten up the turnbuckles on it, that pushes that center pipe up and he has no sag. That ridge line is perfectly straight. So you see there in the left hand picture in the middle is a picture of the turnbuckle. And there's a close up of the short pipe with the cable running through it. I do not recommend using less than a 3 16th inch galvanized cable. Here's a close up of the turnbuckles. Different varieties, different manufacturers all do the same thing. One has a left thread, one has a right thread, and when you turn the center part, it pulls them together. Neat thing. Started using those as a clothesline when I was a kid. Now you see the last strip? On the inside is the one by four. Brandon st stapled his screen to it. Then he went over the top of it and he screwed on, not nail, screwed on the last strip. That way, when he, if he ever wants to relocate this to another place in the yard or to another residence, he could unscrew the wood and with one yank of his hand, pull those staples off. They're very lightweight staples, only made to hold long enough to get the last strip up very clean insulation. Now he used redwood. Now that's nice. If you use redwood, you don't have to mess with the staining because the bugs, the termite, and the fungus don't like redwood. Now here is, you notice there, the pipe and the taping there. What we did is we wrapped a piece of parachute cord. It was good for 750 pounds around the top side pipe and went down to the ground and we pounded in a 24 inch to 30 inch stake in the bottom. It has an eye on it. Now we went up and we came down. Then we took a little piece of bamboo, stuck it between the two strings and we twisted it until it got tight. Phenomenal force on that. You do that and all you do is duct tape it so it doesn't spin apart on you. Okay. Now notice around the base, 
Brandon has run, he's run one by six all the way around, quite adequate for the job. I prefer two by six or two by eight, just a little sturdier than that. Depends on if you have to backfill or not. So you see over on the right hand edge here, you see some air underneath his board. He's gonna go in there and gravel. Now he'll probably beef that section up and screw on another piece of wood to keep the rock from sliding underneath, okay? So also notice on his metal pipe, he put a concrete brick underneath it. That way we were able to assemble the building in a day. Now he can go back, put the footings and he can do a pulse hole digger and dig a hole and put it down. A lot of people like to put a building up and look at it for a little bit and make sure it's where they want it to be, etc. These are buildings are so light that if you undo the straps holding them down, four to six people, one person on each pipe, you can pick it up, move it two feet to the side, dig your post holes, put your footings, and the next day move the uh, building back and set it right down on top of your fittings. Now here's a building we built many, many years ago. You see it, I got vines creeping up on me and that. And this is a compost building, okay? Not a greenhouse, but I have to keep the rain off my compost. So it doesn't get, uh, we don't care about the screen going up on the top of it. And that's melons that are going up on the top of it. So we, you know, and we do lily koi vines in that. Uh, I don't mind it being shaded entirely. Now I normally use white tarp everywhere because I've noticed I don't get as many mosquitoes underneath it. I use a silver tarp here in Hawaii. It gets so shady, the mosquitoes love it. I don't want to make them that happy. But notice the two by fours on the left and the right. They're strapped to the pipe at the top, staked at the bottom, and I just built my own homemade screen door. And notice this is not does not have a bug screen. This has a chicken screen because I have to keep the chickens out or they go raid my compost pile and eat all my worms. Now here's a little bit of a detail. You can see how we did it down at the bottom. And notice I did a two by four because when I went to hammer in those staples, you know, with a conventional hammer, it was a lot easier to nail into a two by four than a thinner one by four. Now here are some of the construction hints. The Sawzall is your one and all tool. I like to use a battery grinder to clean up those cut edges. They are knife sharp. They'll rip your hand apart. A lot of guys will blow that off. They just cut it and they put it together carefully. Trust me, that'll be sharp five years from now when you take it apart. So take a minute. It took less than a minute to grind the ends of the um, a pipe off. Sanding won't do it. They're, they're so sharp, they'll cut your sanding paper. Now you see the TC-11 that was invented right here in Hawaii. But you can use, it's an anti-corrosive compound. We use it on our farm equipment at that. Say about nominally 10 or $12 a can. Uh, you will not, you, a can will last a year for me on a farm. Great stuff. Boeing makes a corrosion blocker. There are different companies out there, but some kind of corrosion block, you want to put it on the inside of all the fittings and on the pipe and you put it together. We have found out if we oil it before we put it together, five years later, I can take it apart with no problem at all. If I don't do it, it will be rusted together and we end up sawing the building apart. Real pain in the butt. We like to use the parachute cord for a lot of stuff. I buy the military spec grade on Amazon. Look at the reviews and make sure you're buying real military spec. 750 pounds and always UV rated. It's silly to use a rope that's not UV rated. The sun will just eat it up in a year here in Hawaii. We also like to modify and put swing out awnings. Now that can go underneath the eave and that extends my work surface. This particular one can swing down and close up in a storm. So one thing I want to talk about, when we put it together and on Brandon's, we quickly put it together with bungee cords. He will go back and lace that in. Now he can leave the bungees one, but the building department wants to see the lacing. Otherwise, the wind is going to blow and it's going to stretch out those bungees. Then the tarp's going to sag. A heavy rain's going to come, puddle in the tarp, and collapse the whole thing. So here are some pictures of the lacing. This is using uh, one quarter inch um, marine rope, UV rated. Uh, it's not too expensive. It's reasonable. You can do the parachute cord. It's probably the cheapest UV rating. And 750 pounds is more than enough to do this, okay? Um, so I, I write here some of the pros and cons of the bungees. When to 
If I'm going to do like a double tarp on the inside, I'll just use bungees. It's not structural, but the outside I'll lace in. Okay. Now here you see is a venting down a ridge vent. The one on the side on the far side comes up and over, and that's opening there is one foot over, and then the eave is two foot. I have never had the rain blow in. Great stuff. So you see on this building, the tarp on the left on the top, that's 16 by 24. The one on the right is only 12 by 24. No, it's a little bit lower angle. And that provides for the air cap. Also, pay attention to the water bottles. Since I don't use bungees, I need to put tension on the tarp. So I came up with the thing of just taking a $2 uh, bottle, juice bottle, filling it up with water and a hook, and I hook it on it. I've never lost a bottle. Now, one thing I regret is my bottles are not UV. I didn't think of it. So some of them are starting to age out. So I've got to go source out and find me some bottles that uh, I won't have that problem with. But pretty much we've outgrown the bottles. We go use three inch pipe now and we suspend it along. The ladies like the aesthetics of that a little more. So here is a two inch pipe out on our uh, composting building. No bungees on this, just a two inch tarp. And I notice it comes up there uh, about 24 inches. And at the end, it unscrews. I fill it with a garden hose. Now that thing weighs somewhere upwards, probably 40, 50 pounds hanging on the tarp. I have never lost a tarp that's been constructed this way. Now here again is a close up of the bottles. We made homemade hooks and we hooked them up. Notice that this is a double roof building. Okay. I also notice I have fans hanging up 110 volt. I flip them on and I can clear the air in a heartbeat. Um, here's another angle of water bottles coming all the way down. Nice thing about the water bottles. I can go up there on the scaffolding and roll on the brick floor and I can hand those down to a helper. And then I don't have to mess with a pipe. If it was a permanent installation or out on the eve, I would use the three inch pipe full of water. But this time, the bottles just work out really great. We've had no problem with the wind or otherwise. Now, here's another. Uh, this is a three inch one. This is a, where we park our tractor or sometime we have to paint a lot of wood. I need a work area. We did this and this three inch pipe here. It weighs about I think we calculated out about 50 to 60 pounds full of water going all the way down. I've never lost a tarp doing this. So here's an in view angle of it. That's 12 foot wide. And that I believe that is 40 feet long. Those green posts are 10 feet apart. So here you got 12 by 40 feet post only on one side. And that way, because it's right on the edge of my driveway, but I don't want to have somebody nipping a post out there, right? And the UPS truck or, or FedEx trucks coming in, they clear it no problem at all. Uh, it's really worked out really well. I dug four post holes, planted the post into concrete. I back guide them. It's doing great. Now here's the easy corner tents. These are our suppliers highly recommend. By the way, they can ship the fittings to anywhere in the world. You buy the pipe locally, but I recommend you give them a call and they will make a little drawing for you and they will put all the parts in a box. I've had them ship them to me inner island and but they'll ship them anywhere and just COD. You pay the freight when you get it. Like I said, all the fittings to build a 20 by 20 tarp, which is 24 by 24 on the eaves, all of that would fit in a suitcase. OK, so I actually went to Salvation Army, bought a cheap suitcase, threw all the fittings in it flew to Maui and reassembled the thing. Did the same thing over in Kauai. So check out our story. This is uh, the back of our business card and it has a lot of information, our address, our phone numbers, the whole thing. And check out our website. There's two websites. There's www.olamanagardens.com and there's another one, www.olamanagardenaquaponics.com. Strictly aquaponics on that one. A lot of videos links. So this is me on the right and Natalie on the left and that and uh, with our phone number. So feel free to give us a call if we can be of any assistance to you. 
We also have some books for sale on building airlift pumps and that. They're available on our website in our store. This video will be available in our store. And this book is printed out and bound on heavy duty photo paper and it's lasered pretty weatherproof and it's a lay flat book like plastic binding or spiral binding uh, great stuff and the book's only like $75 I think you'll find it very useful